D. P. P. The Steve Dangle Podcast. With your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. Let's go! Uh, D, you know, I know you're a gamer and uh, and all this. And, uh, you know, I'm just thinking maybe out loud as far as in your shoes right now. It's like, all right, we've done all the thing we can do. We've done all the game planning we can do. Maybe... Maybe, you know, just fuck it. We'll just go in next year and just not think that anymore and just win this thing when we don't think so much. Is that, am I on the right path at all with this? Like maybe you just guys think a little too much? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Last one here for Nathan. Sport- Mark Spector, sports net. <laughs> Poor Speck had to follow that up. <laughs> I feel bad for Mark Spector. <laughs> We should have had Mark Spector on today just to talk about that fucking experience. Oh, I need to know. that would have been hilarious. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, you, you wouldn't. Uh, uh, no, I don't have his number. Mm. Or do I? Maybe it's I do. A, it's okay. Yeah. I don't know. Awesome. But I would. I wish we had. Uh, so, so Nate. Uh, Nate, Nate, can you translate the last question everybody's talking about the swearing i think what i want to do i want to do is go uh, go through the 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 sentence itself (laughs) i think we need to go through the sentence by the way if you don't know that who that is it's adrian dater of where does he work now i want to say the denver post okay okay let me see long time reporter there bit of an infamous cat Um, uh definitely an infamous cat and has been in the news for the wrong reasons before. But in this particular case, it's a, and I don't actually know the story because that was pre me really getting into hockey in the media side. Um, um, let's put it at bad DMs that you shouldn't DM. Oh, okay. There you go. Uh, so you guys want me to read his, uh, where he works from his Twitter bio? Please do. Yeah. yeah. So it's uh, Adrian Dater, Avalanche writer, editor, boss for ColoradoHockeyNow.com. <laughs> Avs Insider at 1043 The Fan, uh, writer at Bookies. Whoa, they let him on the radio? Uh, like, at, man, well, Adam, I hope I he's mean, better at answering questions than he is at asking them. We're well, all proof that they'll let anyone on the radio. Well, I guess. Fairness, but okay, like, so let's 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 replay that question because that was sure. Who cares that, that Vegas got through last night? That was the biggest news. That question. Uh, I mean, it was the biggest highlight. All right, you guys ready for it again? Uh, ready, yes, please. As far as in your shoes right now, it's like, all right, we, we've done all. Uh, Nate, you know, I know you're a gamer and uh, and all this. And, uh, you know, I'm just thinking maybe out loud as far as in your shoes right now. It's like, all right, we've done all the things we can do. We've done all the game planning we can do. Maybe, maybe you know, just fuck it. We'll just go in next year and just not think that anymore and just win this thing when we don't think so much. Is that? Am I on the right path at all with this? Like maybe oh this guys God. think a little too much. So, so, no. <laughs> don't forget the no, oh, Nate. <laughs> so what it's is basically the kid like supposed to do in that situation? You know, he I, did the only option. No. Yeah, like he. <laughs> so it's basically like so, like I don't know. This season you were good, but like you were thinking, and maybe next year it's like fuck it, don't think, and then you win, right? <laughs> Right? Like, <laughs> what was that? Now, here's the thing. I have asked some horrendous questions mm-hmm. to you guys, to myself. I've got, I called Nick Robertson a defenseman. I, you know, I, I, the, ah, you used to do the dangle dial. I, oh, <laughs> Jesus. With Jeff Blair. Uh, okay. If anybody, if anybody, anybody doesn't understand, you, you please explain the dangle dial. The dangle dial to me was, Okay, so Steve already is a bit of a cartoon character, as you probably know. But what it was the Fan 590's initial attempt to pull Steve into the fold here in Toronto. And the idea was that Steve would literally lose his mind every single time he was on. And so, you know, because the Leafs were a frustrating team. What a surprise. And, uh, and, and Jeff Blair would try to interrupt Steve and get him to stop. And Steve would just go and go and go and go and then hang up. And, uh, and Jeff... Uh, God bless him. Jeff's got to be in his late fifties at this point and doesn't fucking get it. Uh, <laughs> and none of us got it, got it, to be honest with you. I think it was a nice idea, no, uh, but <laughs> so I would pre-record these little rants yeah. and he would talk over them in the morning, yeah. but he would do it in his aloof and dismissive Jeff Blair way. Mm-hmm. 
And I th- I think he did his best to make it work, to be honest. Yeah. I think he did, too. Because it was it was him playing the recording and then just kind of going along with you. But you're just ranting because you don't know what's actually going to happen in the moment with Jeff Blair. It's just a recording of you. So and the it, whole thing just came across. So he'd be really like, awkward. so Steve would be talking a million miles a minute. Yeah. And Jeff would be like, Steve, uh, <laughs> yeah, Steve. That's not bad. <laughs> uh, Steve. Um, well, no, Steve. Uh, oh, and then, oh, he hung up. <laughs> <laughs> like it was just like i was like what the what's being accomplished here i don't understand this and what i didn't love about it at the time for you was that it just added to the 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 stereotype about what you are which is what people were using to write you off i was trying and, to be wacky stunt boy right and and that, i didn't like that so i remember thinking like why the hell are they making him do that obviously it's worked out i don't know steve works at sports net or whatever so i guess it's okay well but, jeff uh, jeff made it work and but then by some miracle they sold it Mm-hmm. So it was sponsored. And so even when Blair wasn't there and they had a, another host, we had to do it. And they, <laughs> they, whoever the, <laughs> they would not get it. <laughs> they would not get it. They would not play along. Yeah. They did not enjoy the bit at all. And I would just die a thousand deaths on air every day. Um, There's a real trooper. Like that's a good guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Blair? Yeah. Jeff Blair. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, he called into his own show when Adam and I filled in for him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what I'm getting to is I've I've had many awkward experiences in front of a mic, and you just deal with it. And I feel like we wouldn't be making as big a deal over this clip this morning if he had some humor about it. Yeah. So, I mean, full marks to Pete Blackburn uh, for posting the clip. Because, I mean, oh, who's Mary really... Christmas. Merry Christmas. Who's going, who's going dig deep on uh, post games? But Pete did. And what was interesting about that is, uh, like, is this is the second to last question. You'll hear, okay, last question, Mark Spector, Sportsnet. Like, it is deep into the, you know, usually you listen to the first three questions. The players answered all they're going to answer. Nate McKinnon looks like he's going to cry. Like, uh, what's he going to say at this point? Why are we still asking this man questions? And, like, he, you know, he had just come off saying, I've been in the league 10 years and I haven't won shit. Yeah. Like, what... Uh, there, there's your quote. Like, well, I don't know what you're going to ask that you're going to get that's more powerful than that. And that's a damn good quote, by the way. That is a great point. And I, and I wrote about this in my book. Have I told you that I wrote a book? There was a, an uh, Oakland A's pitcher, I think, who the A's were on like some ridiculous losing streak. Th- this is when I was an intern and I got to go do the visiting locker room for the Jays. They were on like an eight game losing streak. And I want to say they were leading like by three runs or something heading into the eighth. And he blows it. He blows it. The Jays win and their streak continues. We got as, you know, maybe a dozen of us with microphones in his face. We got about 45 seconds in and we all looked at each other, realized we had our quote because he was like, I cost us the game or whatever. We, we looked at each other. We realized we had our quote and everyone backed off. Yeah. Right away. Yep. We're like, okay, that's enough. Right. So, and I yeah. think with, with Zoom, you don't have that sort of, um, that vibe thing. You know what I mean? Like there's like a human to human, I'm going to back off this subject now. Um, and I find that in Zoom meetings too, is there's just not the same social cues that are available to people normally. And it, it's funny, I, I'm glad that we've been able to adjust with this show because I know when we first started doing it over Zoom, it was pretty tough. And, and yeah. you know, now it just feels like old hat, like this is what we've been doing. But, um, you know, it, certainly it was, a, it was awkward. And they, some of the post-game stuff is awkward just because guys are taking their mute off or, you know, they're trying to talk to Pete. It's, it's very, very complicated. Now, um, so Pete Blackburn takes the clip, posts it. It has right now 11,000 likes, close to 12. Oh, and so, so immediately, and as Steve said this perfectly, if Adrian had had a sense of humor about this and said, yeah, man, you got me. It was a, that was one of the dumbest questions I've ever asked. Everybody would have been like, ah, over. Mm-hmm. But what Adrian responds with is, oh, thanks, Pete, for the lesson in online decorum. And then, so Pete being Pete responded back with, I mean, this is, li- I mean, your question was literally this and it was the Bill O'Reilly, uh, fuck it. <laughs> All, what's the, what does he say in it? It's we'll do it live. We'll do it it's, live. What do you mean? It's, Sting truly play us out. it's a truly surreal clip. It is. It's crazy. Cause he doesn't understand what playing somebody out is. And then Adrian <laughs> said, fair enough. Just talking like hockey people talk. Sorry if it's too sensitive for your ears. He said that to Pete. And Pete wrote, like, you're right. <laughs> Nate seemed to get it. 
And then I'm just looking at tweet, and then <laughs> and then Adrian responded again. Oh, did he? he? Let him go yeah. again. He oh. said, "You're right, Pete. I forgot you're the best beat writer in hockey." Oh wait, I uh, just for, just forgot you've never been a beat writer. You've never covered a team day to day, bro. You just <laughs> say you fucked up. And, like, then, and then he and then he blocked him. And then he blocked him, but Pete's like, "I thought I was the sensitive one." <laughs> so <laughs> like, uh, like I listen. I get it. It's easier to just talk shit from a computer than it is to be a beat writer. Like I did it briefly and I was like, this is fucking hard. Like, yeah. but yeah. that has nothing to do with. Yeah. <laughs> also, also, he followed up today. Just, just. Oh, did uh, he? Yeah. He said in response to a tweet that says, uh, well, the only thing that made any of us laugh the last four games was probably Dater's question to uh, McKinnon in post game. So thank you, Data, for putting a smile on our faces. And it was a good question, just a little jumbled. Hater is going to hate. So he, re- he replied to that tweet by saying, I mangled the question big time. There's a reason I'm a writer and not a broadcaster. But that's like, what he probably should have said initially and not angrily. That's all he could have said. Pete that's all he, had to say. <laughs> he was probably sore. Hey, man, it was a dumb question. Sorry. <laughs> He's probably sore in the moment. Yeah. But like, I think he, geez, man, I think he got internet mad. I think he got internet mad. Oh yeah, is and hey, we've all been there. All been there. We've all been in big internet mad. <laughs> Except Jesse. Jesse has never been internet mad. I don't think Jesse no. shit posted anyone. Internet mad isn't a thing you should get. No, no don't not. let the anonymous internet peoples infect your brain waves, humans. Or anyway, noted so- sensitive troll Pete Blackburn. <laughs> 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 oh my god, oh, it's just just there was, yeah, there's yeah. also do you want to hear a couple more of the back and forth data was going out after the pete's interaction yes yes i do <laughs> so oh, on twitter i was like yeah. he didn't ask him more no, no like no, oh, okay twitter. okay okay so okay. someone tweeted at data and he said pete just laughed he didn't even critique you and then data said couldn't give two shits what pete thinks about me oh no and then uh somebody said this is going to be on chicklets right and he said Oh no, chicklets might get on me. Oh God, how will I survive? Uh, and then as somebody else said, Dater, you're really an idiot. And he said, you got it wrong, bro, but thanks for the evaluation. It was a question where I was trying to be sympathetic to McKinnon. So <laughs> he's been going like, at everybody today. I, I don't know. Maybe I just humiliate myself more often, but like the, the, the play there is you wear it. Like you, you yeah. wear it. Yeah. I asked an Elmer Fudd ass question and said fuck on a Zoom call that, as I saw someone tweet yesterday, they made a great point. Like, sometimes they go live to air with this. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Like, and which like, the I swearing... think he's ill advised anyway, but. Yeah, but the swearing's not that bad. Like, okay, whatever. Like, it's, a, it's the F word. It, it, are we all going to pretend like we haven't heard it? It's like. On eastern on the eastern seaboard, it's past midnight. In, in the west, it's past like eleven p.m. Like, who cares? It's really not going to make that big of a difference. So everybody getting on the, on them about decorum. Like, I get it. You don't want your reporters cussing it around uh, with their questions, sure. but that is not yeah. the the uh, the bad part here. The bad part is the way the question was asked and then the response to the question. Like, when you fuck up, like, okay. So for instance, and Steve, I hate to put you on the spot like this. Oh. But me, when, when Steve thought it was a good idea to walk up to Marc Messier during oh. a stamp unveiling at, at the Hockey Hall of Fame with a Stanley Cup cookie and said, hey, Mark, I want to take a picture. Could you put the Stanley Cup pic, uh, uh, cookie above your head? And Mark said, no. You know, we, wore, we, we enjoyed no. that clip for weeks. You, we that's where you that. have it wrong. You have it oh, wrong, Adam. What do I have it wrong about? That was the second time I humiliated myself in front of Mark Messier. Oh, okay. The first time was at like the opening of some Rogers store in the Eaton Center or something. And then I asked him to hold the cookie above his head for a photo. I, I thought he thought good. you were a fan, right? And not somebody there covering the event. Right. Then the Hockey Hall of Fame thing, I wanted him to comment on Nick Kiprios' China Club story. Because mm-hmm. that was a recent story he had told on our show. And I thought it was relevant. And he was just like, no, I don't remember. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. <laughs> Thanks, man. I can't wait to meet him again and go over for 3. I, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. And at that time, what we'll do is go, well, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> well, and you know what? We had fun with it, but I was a little sore. Oh, yeah. Oh, but yeah. It was, I was a little sore. But that's sort of what made it fun. And you got to have, maybe, maybe Adrian yeah. needs his friends around him, like you have, to tease you about it. 
right? Oh, yeah. To warm it up a little bit. Because to me, that is a quintessential Steve Dangle moment because you're so innocent at heart. You are. And it's so funny, you know, when you, when you deal sure. with Steve, he really does wish and hope the best for people and is not jaded at all still. And it's funny because, except for with the Leafs. And it's funny that, that like, he would have thought, yeah, Mark Messier is totally down to hold this cookie above his head. <laughs> By some fucking stranger who's never he's never talked to. Yeah, no, man, I definitely want to be your dancing pony. It's totally cool. Uh, so no, you got to pay him for that. Yeah, you got to pay him for that. He did. He did. I saw that Tide commercial, Mark. It was Stone Cold? I saw it. Anyway, sorry, Messier. It's Messier. Messier. Hilarious <laughs> for money. <laughs> See, I'm sore. I'm well, maybe sore it's only it. funny for money, which I, I get. Yeah. So I anyway, I, uh, uh, I, <laughs> it, was just, it was a fun clip. Hey, so um, Vegas is pretty good, eh? Holy shit. Like wow. really, really good. Yeah. They made Colorado look average. They really did. And like the abs have been so good all year. And the way, uh, well, I think it was the second game of the playoffs. Kadri gets suspended. And then the Avs still just deal with the Blues games three and four. Mm-hmm. And then they were up to nothing on Vegas. Like they gave you no reason to think, oh, you know, they're going to really miss Kadri. Or having or not having Kadri is going to be the reason you sink or swim in this series. And Vegas beat them four straight times. Mm-hmm. Four straight times. And it's just. You know, we we think of the Leafs as the only young team who plays young in the league just because we're so hyper-focused on them. Colorado looked like an extremely talented team better. playing better. playing young. Better. Like, they're better, better than the Leafs, 100%, despite what some people on the internet will tell you. They, they're better than the Leafs. And by some people, I'm I mean sorry. exactly who, one person. Who said that the Leafs are better than Colorado? Editor and Leaf, exactly one person. And they were wrong, okay. but it's okay. okay. I've been wrong before too. Uh, they, but they made they made a lot of young mistakes, and I believe they were up one nothing last night. Mm-hmm. And then Grubauer allows a goal he's not even looking at, and he didn't uh, see the puck. It was yeah. two. Go- it was the goal. <laughs> the Avalanche scored was twenty two seconds in, and then uh, Vegas scored like thirty seconds later. It was two goals within a minute. Yeah, and you know, for either goalie there, I wouldn't blame them. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah. Who would have thought Nick Holden would be the guy to even things up? Nick Holden. Vegas, man. Yeah. Vegas. They take they take guys who you just don't think about and make them stars. Exactly. Well, um, Colorado got, I think they're they were a little screwed on the penalty front in terms of just calls for their side. Because I think the last time Vegas took a penalty that wasn't a uh, a too many men on the ice was like the first period of game five. So they went like six, what is that? Five consecutive periods without a, a penalty called against them, which just isn't true, you know? So they're getting away with mauling, um, mauling the Avalanche's star players, which is kind of, which is kind of how they shut down the team. It was kind of, Hey, you got to stop these guys, even though it was run and gun for the no. first two yesterday. No, if they're true stars, they should be able to get through that. <laughs> Gretzky did. Oh no, he didn't. That's right. Cause Dave Semenko would knock your fucking teeth out. Right. So, so, so is this part of the conversation now then? Because yeah. I don't want to take anything away from any of the four teams that are in the final four, Vegas, Tampa, Montreal, Islanders. I don't want to take anything away from any of them. They earned their spot we'll in the final that. four. Okay, fine. But they earned their spot in the final okay. four. But how do we get past that a factor every year in the playoffs is the officiating in the NHL is the worst in professional sports? How, how do we get past that? McDavid, eight straight playoff games without a penalty drawn. It's a joke. And, and I've said it, I'll say it for like the third consecutive show. That should cost someone their employment well and and, that's ridiculous from the montreal series steve uh there wasn't a penalty called on mark shifley after game one like he (laughs) didn't draw a single one it's crazy i don't know know. what happened it's wild it's why it's cadre too you're you're talking about a top three top five player in the league in mark shifley adam What, Adam, you, what what is this in I, reference to? I'm All the quoting, seasoning in the I'm, world and you chose salt. I'm oh. quoting Blake Wheeler. And oh. also, I think it's funny that you could cl- claim that Mark Shifley did not draw a penalty after game one. Okay. So, okay. Okay. I don't know why you're taking digs at Shifley. <laughs> 
You don't? No. I think you do. All right, no, now they're out. Um, you know, and I, but I think I think you're absolutely right, Steve. Like in all honesty, like if you've got again, and and people in the comments are like, I don't think ESPN cares about what you guys think they care about. I'm like, yeah, they fucking do. The whole way you sell a game is you have stars in it, and if you you know like for the for this year for the NBA playoffs, it's not good for the playoffs that LeBron's out early. It wouldn't have been LeBron and Kawhi could have easily been out in the first round. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, there are still stars left for sure, but we're look at the the top 20 scores in the NHL. Are there any left? Top 20 scores. Um, So I made a, I made a round three preview video today for Sportsnet, And I was looking at the top scores, (laughs) you know, the top scorer in the playoffs is who Nikita Kucherov. Of course. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> 11 or no sorry 18 points in 11 games man so he, uh he i mean man he had a zero point season so now you got these guys who don't even score in the regular season and all of a sudden the playoffs hit what? the stars uh, what's what up with this listen i was told the islanders were exciting because they've scored the most goals in the playoffs it's like guys like we'll get to that <laughs> you're not yeah, well, um, we'll to, uh, no but the, the the officiating so the dang it's next week i'll, I'll just give you a preview mm-hmm. uh like a big part of it is going to be uncalled headshots, oh. blatant headshots. Nick Ritchie gets a $5,000 fine for braining a guy. Kyle Palmieri, I think, got nothing for braining a guy. Yeah. Andre Palat doesn't get a hearing for braining a guy. When are you going to take this seriously? <laughs> when are you going to take this seriously? Sidney Crosby didn't do it, right? So what's it going to take? It, it nothing changed when the best player in the sport, the number one attraction in the sport was out for a year and a half. So what reason is there to expect that anything is going to change? That was 10 years ago. It's not going to change. So mm-hmm. B- biggest stars in the sport are just going to keep getting concussed, I guess. Um, can I correct myself from earlier? I said uh, first period in game five it was actually second period in game four. The last time uh, Vegas was called for a penalty that wasn't a delay of game, it was a coincidental roughing for Alex Tuck. Um, so yeah, it was just watching the game last night. It was just they're swarming the Avalanche's big stars, and it was just working. But like wow. that, that first and second period, if you're trying to sell the game to like America and ESPN, like that's those are the two periods I'd want them to watch from the hockey perspective because it was the two best teams. It was seven goals scored. Some of them are just awful and messy, and some of them are just snipe shows. It was it was a great two periods of hockey, and I think like those were the I think those are the two best teams in the playoffs. And we saw yeah, that was the Stanley Cup, and I think everybody probably can agree on that. most likely the Stanley Cup. And it's unfortunate for Colorado remember. that on paper they lose in the second round, but if we if out of context in history they probably lost to the second best team in the playoffs right now because yeah this series was electric i hate doing this too i do hate doing this but we do have to bring it up again yeah i I watched uh the pieces of the game that i could because i had to be up early um and all the highlights and thought the whole time what's this series like with nazim kadri in it yeah man you know I, i i was tweeting about it too like last year Colorado was completely vindicated. Like we took a risk on this guy and look at how he rewards us Mm -hmm. scoring game winners, record breakers. He was one of their best producers, one of their best performers. And then the next year for the third time in four years, he suspended in the first two games of the playoffs. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? Like, how do you there (laughs) mathematically, there's no, there's no way he does it again. <laughs> he said that right? He said before. it. He's like, what are the chances it happens a third time? Come on. So this is the thing. <laughs> this is the thing. Like, people are like, oh, they gotta trade him to who? Right. Yo, yo, here's here's what you do. You trade him to Buffalo for Jack Eichel because he's a great regular season performer and uh, and he's great in the playoffs too. But the Sabers aren't going anywhere. And Nate McKinnon makes six and a half million. You can fit Jack Eichel in there. Do it. You figure out what you got to do to make Kadri for Sam Reinhart work and see if that doesn't wake him up. Yeah, maybe that's what it would be. <laughs> it's not far off from being... Is he out of chances? There. 
I mean, like, he can't be. He's but, too good. Right, because he's not in terms of just teams who are willing to take a chance on but him. But the problem is but, if you trade him to a legitimate contender, right? If you trade him to a legitimate contender, they're going to have the same questions. And the value goes down. If you trade him to a team that's like, we might be a fringe playoff team, who knows? Then it's like, it doesn't matter. Just get us in. Yes, if you need a guy to get you to the playoffs. But if you're a contender, you can't depend on this person. That's three series or three seasons out of the last four where you look at game seven for the Leafs in 2018 and you go, what if you look at game seven in 2019 or no, sorry. He was in game seven in well, 2018. I don't know. Uh, you look at four, five, and six. Yeah. 2019. No. no. And then uh, this year they lose four straight and Vegas was super physical. You're mm-hmm. telling me Kadri doesn't go them into something into some sort of shenanigans and then we're having a different conversation about the penalties they were winning that game against st louis i think it was three to one i i don't know what to tell you mm-hmm. i don't know what to tell you it's just i don't know what you do about that we it this is, is a bummer thing. this I'm show is a for this person the, uh, yeah all three of us big nazim Kadri fans it's oh, a yeah. bummer it's a real bummer and I think a lot of Toronto fans are huge Nazem Kadri fans because for a long time, he was the whipping boy here. Everybody was mad at him, mad at Kessel, mad at Phaneuf. Like he was there when things were really bad. And by some miracle, he remained with the team. He was almost traded about 45 times and turned into a monster, like a really good player for the Leafs uh, under Mike Babcock and became one of the most effective players they had. Yep. And it was, it's such a shame because there's a local guy who came up through the ranks and, you know, three years in the minors and like all of the stuff that you had to do to win. And he got there and then you're just, you're seeing this happen again and again and again. And I think some serious questions need to be asked. The abs, the abs, I, I think if you're, if you're Joe Sackick, how do you, I mean, what do you do? Like, cause the thing is with the abs, their whole mantra is get the best player available. Which, if you ask me, I think the Leafs should have stuck to that. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. We'll, um, see, we'll see if it pays off. How do you, at this point, and like I said, I think I already answered the question, but how do you, how do you get maximum value best player for Nazem Kadri? Are you going to win the Nazem Kadri trade? Well, the Leafs here, didn't. On a player-to-player basis, the Leafs didn't. Here's what was at stake here. Unrestricted free agents for the Colorado Avalanche. <laughs> we'll start in net. Jonas Johansson, who they got at the deadline, Adam Werner is an RFA. Dubnik is a UFA. Grubauer, who is nominated for the Vesna, is a UFA. That's going to be a world of hurt. Uh, on defense, they got 12 guys. Kyle Burrows, uh, Dylan Renouf, uh, Kale McCarr is an RFA. Oh, for the love of God. Dennis Gilbert, Connor Timmons, uh, both RFAs. Patrick Nemeth, UFA. Liam O'Brien, UFA. Jason Mania, UFA. Miko Salamaki, UFA. Kiefer Sherwood, RFA. TJ Tynan, UFA, Tyson Jost, RFA, Carl Soderberg, UFA, Pierre Edward uh, Belmar, UFA, Brandon Sod, UFA, and your captain, Gabriel Landeskog, UFA. That is a go for it year. And I realize there's more names on that list. Look at, like, I'm looking <laughs> forwards 21, defense 12, goalies five. It's because that's their playoff lineup. But it's, it's, uh, if, if not this year, then when? I mean, they'll still be good next year. Mm-hmm. But we're talking Kale McCarr getting nominated for the Norris and on a on a um, on a entry level contract where he's making less than the rookie maximum too. Kale McCarr made eight eighty this year. Wow, <laughs> like, dude! Oh and God. Landeskog is probably not signing for less than five point five, which he was making this year. Sod, oh God, oh, that's what was at stake. And listen, Kadri's in the series. Do they win? Do they lose? Well, now we'll never know. Well, we, I think at very least we get a game seven. Probably. You know, and and that's what I, you know, I think everybody would have wanted that from this series because it was a spectacular series. It really was. So, you know, you want to see team one and team two go head to head and we got it. It was great. Mm-hmm. So, um, Jesse, you have something to say? Uh, if we're moving on, just like to note that Vegas has the worst camera angle for their broadcast. In the- <laughs> it's way too low down towards the ice. They is, it, is, it, it is it worse than San Jose? No, San Jose is pretty bad, too. San Jose's but, lighting is oh, horrible. It's, it's weird. Yeah, yeah. Anyways. Calgary's is really video gamey. 
but the lighting kind of compensates yeah yeah well calgary is a stupid saddle <laughs> you know there's so many complications yeah. with that wasn't we got a concave uh ceiling there you definitely look at that building from the outside and go well this would be a neat idea if this was the sims <laughs> right but like it's real life and maybe you shouldn't have yeah anyways vegas raise your raise your camera yeah so um I with that i We'll get into, and obviously we can we can do a little bit on the Isles in Boston, but I think we should just get into the series that, first off, I, I do want to say, before all that, the NHL rushed, rushed to get into the first round. Rushed. Could not have gotten into it faster. In fact, they made the Canadian division wait for four or five days, but the rest of the NHL jumped in because they needed to get the, they need to get the cup out there. We need to, we need to award this fucking cup. Get it off our hands. It's a hot potato. And now we don't have another game until Sunday night. And it's not even Sunday night. It's Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m. I'd like what? to apologize to the NHL for the fact they have seven Canadian teams. I'm like, we're really sorry for the inconvenience. <laughs> it's just like, why did we have to rush that? If it, like, if we're taking a couple days off here, what's the big deal? Like I just get, I are we going to get into this round? Or are we not going to get into this round? It should start right away. It should just start on Saturday night, but now it's Sunday afternoon. Your hockey, what's your night? Saturday, Saturday night. That's Saturday. absurd scheduling. Yeah. It's just so I like I've I've tried to take it easy on the schedule just because I don't know, shit's messed up this year. But oh. it's basically I mean, the, the, there's almost no restrictions at the arenas that and, are uh, playing in the States. And I, it's I not know. like the Islanders in Boston have a long way to travel to see each other, right? Uh, 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 Islanders, um, Tampa. Islanders Tampa, excuse me. Sorry. Yeah, they could have. Um, uh, even then, two hour flight. They could have played. They could have played. Vegas, Montreal. That's a tough third round. <laughs> that is a tough third round. That is. But I'm just Whoever saying. Whoever comes out of that series is going to be pretty wiped. I think, I think the problem for me is that it's like you just, there's no need to stop. Let go. They're getting away of, they're getting in the way of themselves by not playing on Saturday night. There's opening right. with, with uh, as, Isles Tampa. I can tell you as a Leaf fan, when uh, you stop watching after the first round, which happens to us every goddamn year, um, you realize, oh man, there's other things to do. Like we can do stuff and it's summer and it's nice. And the NHL is going to lose that, that momentum. And that matters. That shit matters. Breaking news. This important PSA is brought to you by Manscaped.com. This is your pubic service announcement and the news you've all been waiting for. The Manscaped engineering team has now confirmed that we have successfully created the Lawnmower 4.0. It's a trimmer, which is now available for purchase in the USA and right here in Canada. This new trimmer was just released only moments ago, and we are one of the first to get our hands on it and share the news. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer to you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code SDP at manscaped.com. Now, I'm one of the first people to try the new 4.0. And let me just say, I am blown away by the experience, the craftsmanship, the detail. It feels like a 4.0. You know what I'm saying? Their advanced ceramic blade and skin safe technology is so good, it almost seems as though Manscaped worked with engineers to ensure that your area would be safe. You could send it to space and it'd be fun. Yeah. Actually, I gotta be honest with you. Um, it works really great. So I would highly suggest that you go to manscaped.com and get free shipping and get 20% off. And all you have to do is use the code SDP. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code SDP. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for your tool. If dreams of vacations and enjoying the fun of life are turning back into reality for you, don't let concerns over financial setbacks keep you from saying yes. Credit Karma helps keep your financial goals in check so you won't have to hit pause on the good times ahead. And here's the other thing. Starting something new, maybe a new business, that can be nerve-wracking. Credit Karma can give you more confidence before you make a decision. Credit Karma's game-changing technology shows you tailored offers for credit cards and personal loans that you're more likely to be approved for so you can apply with confidence. They use your credit and other financial information to show you custom recommendations. Whether you want cash back, travel rewards, to consolidate debt, Credit Karma can help you find offers for all your goals. With a selection of options and approved odds, you have the power to make informed decisions. Credit Karma, apply with confidence. Go to creditkarma.com slash SDP to learn more and find out offers just tailored for you. That's creditkarma.com slash SDP, or you can see your offers on the Credit Karma app. Apply with confidence today. Go to creditkarma.com slash STP 
or the Credit Karma app. With the Islanders and uh, Tampa, can I just be the guy who uh, who says that I, I'm all the way in on the Islanders? I am all the way in on the Islanders. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? This team the that's in. been into back-to-back conference finals and has looked like a juggernaut, you're in on them. Well, you're in on this really but good against team. the Stanley Cup champions, guys. <laughs> I'm all the way in on the Islanders. So wait, oh. you're saying the Islanders are going to beat them? I think they're going to win. Wow. I think they're going to beat Tampa. I, I have, think you're going to be Tampa. I So I was very conflicted making my predictions today because the Islander, I mean, it's stupid to bet against them. And I'll, I've said it every video. I haven't taken them in every video because, I mean, they're playing, you know, the Penguins, who I thought had learned a thing or two and for a while looked like they had. The, the Bruins were the hottest team in hockey and Taylor Hall couldn't stop until he aggressively, abruptly stopped. Um, you know, it's it's dumb to bet against the Islanders. The Tampa Bay Lightning beat them last year sans Stamkos, and now they've got him. Stamkos is fifth in playoff scoring. And they got a Kucherov who's playing the best hockey of his career. Like, absolutely no rust. Absolutely no fatigue. Like, it's, I, you don't have to take anything away from the Islanders in order to say, I think Tampa's going to win this. They're too good. Here's if the I, Islanders beat them, holy shit. Guys, the, guys, the, the Islanders, altar, like, and I, I understand what you're saying, but the Islanders also did just shut down Marshan and Bergeron. Yeah, uh, Marshan had a waves. Marshan had a great series. He did. Like he, he scored two goals in that game six, and both of them were really nice goals, especially the second one when he boxed out his man in front of the net. Like he's playing basketball and just uh, shuffled the puck into the net. Marshan was beautiful you, uh, on you, Wednesday you, night. He so went, but you, here's the, the thing. My, my point the hardest thing to do in the league right now. Yeah. My right. point with scoring is you have a team with Bergeron, Marshan, perennial playoff performers, Pasternak, perennial playoff performer. Taylor Hall has played. Uh, three minutes in the playoffs his entire career and great played team. really great in the first round and you shut him down. And I know Tuka Rask was injured. I get that. Tuka Rask Everybody's was very injured, injured though. What was it? Torn, torn labrum in his hip well, or something. So I forget. About yeah, that. Torn labrum in his hip. Steve made a point years ago when Tyler Johnson was just ripping it up in the playoffs and then had a wrist injury. And he was like, he, he came back and they froze it and it was broken. And Steve's point was, are you telling me 50% of Tyler Johnson is better, like 50% health Tyler Johnson is better than the guy who you're sitting in his place? I think the guy back then was a really young Vlad Nemestikov. And I'm like, there's no way Tyler Johnson with a broken wrist is better than Vlad Nemestikov at anything. Like, there's no way. And like Jordan Swayman was so good for the Bruins all year. Like he was healthy, right? Yep. And like, I, you know what I think was happening there? They realized Rask, you know, he could be done with the team and they wanted him to basically go out on uh, his shield. I, guys, you had a chance to win here. You also, had a chance. The, the yeah. Uh, also, Halak, do, did we forget that Halak played for them in the playoffs last year and they still have him on the roster? Like he was their starting goalie because Rask didn't make the bubble. Mm-hmm. And they is, is Halak still yeah. on the Boston roster? Yeah. Let, let yeah. me look. Let me look. So, yeah, because Jeremy Swayman, I wanted to see. That was that was what I wanted. Jordan, but, is it Jeremy? Jeremy. But they have. Oh, options. it is Jeremy. Whoops. And like <laughs> the, I got it wrong this time. The Steve point you brought up is is so true because it's like what what are we getting at a clock seventy or um ras seventy percent ras is mm-hmm. that better than a hundred percent halak like I don't there's know. N- and there's no way it's seventy. There's no, no way it's no way. it's Not like Ben labor. Bishop. No. It's no. like Ben Bishop. The, the Lightning did it twice, really. Uh, in 2015 because they had uh, Ben Bishop like dragging himself that, that was another Pete Blackburn classic when he basically took one of the zombies from The Walking Dead and put them in the crease and was like here's Ben Bishop in game two <laughs> like he was he was just I, I just I, think I here's the thing guys I think you can I think you can smother the lightning and if there's a team that's going to smother you it's the Islanders I, I honestly I, I just think we got to give the Islanders a little more credit here I know everybody's giving it to Tampa. I am all the way in on the Islanders fans, and I'm all the way in on this team. Barry Trotz, this this effective, sort of boring way that they play. I mean, I don't see how it's not that it's not that Stamkos isn't going to score. It's not that Point's not going to score. It's not that Kucherov's not going to score. It's 
What happens when you can shut them down and then the secondary scoring isn't going to score at all? Like this is, this is the thing. Like you eliminate everybody else and isolate those guys. If the Islanders are able to effectively target and get around Victor Hedman, they can win this series. Because that, I mean. Th- How do you do th- that? Well, the Tampa Bay Lightning are very obviously as good as he is. In 2019, he was not good. He was hurt, and they crumbled. In 2020, he was good, and I believe won the Conn Smythe, and they won the entire Stanley Cup. This year, he's uh, his performance has been kind of spotty, and I believe he's injured. Um, I don't remember what the injury is. It's impossible to keep up. What happened last year, in my opinion, mm-hmm. is the Islanders – tried to play the waiting game Mm -hmm. with the lightning and the opportunity just never arose because it's the lightning. You're not the only team who can play defense for God's sake. Yep. And they play great defense, but I do think the Islanders offense is better than we give it credit for. And they're deeper than we give them credit for. And that, and that's why the Zajac Paul Mary trade helped them so much. Pajot has been really good for them. These playoffs. Beauvillier has been really good. That's my, Uh, my favorite thing about the Islanders is the Beauvillier Nelson uh, Bailey line. Cause they have this thing where they shut it down in the neutral zone, in the neutral zone, or just like on the edge of the defensive zone. They're able to like, they did this so many, this is like three, three times on Wednesday to the Bruins and it led to I think two goals and then one other scoring chance where they just pickpocket you in that little area and then they whoever gets the puck if it's Bailey or if it's Nelson they just they hurry it down the ice and they get this shot and then twice it worked and it led to two goals for Nelson another time it was like a an opportunity for a Bavillier but those that that line in particular does whatever little system they're running so well where they're able to stop the offensive flow before it gets going down at the other their end and then turn it immediately into an offensive chance and like that's what makes the islanders so dangerous because they don't allow the shots and then they get one or a couple down on the other end and that little quick turn is real it's really scary and it stopped the bruins and who knows if it can stop tampa so i i love the reverence that you're talking about the islanders with like mm-hmm. because colorado vegas I think anybody with half their brain turned on who has never watched a hockey game in their entire life could have enjoyed that series. Yes. Or the yep. Lightning versus the Panthers. Yep. You don't, that could be the first hockey you've ever watched. Seven goals, two periods. Like, Flick that brain yeah. off and enjoy. Tampa versus the Islanders. If that's what you're looking for, I think it could be a bit of a challenge for you. But if you want to learn about hockey, uh, yeah. And you, have, and you have the patience for it. Wow. Good point. You, you will love it. it. Well, and so like I've gotten the question a few times and I don't know if I'm the right person to ask, but someone will be like, I'm new to hockey. Um, oh, you know what it was? I kept talking about how Tavares is the little thing King mm. and he, he just, he's not as flashy as some of the guys in the Leafs who are extremely flashy. He is more difficult to watch than Matthews or Marner. You don't need, to even have your, you could have one eye open and <laughs> watch Matthews and be like, that guy's a friggin' star. Tavares on some nights, if you're not fully paying attention, you'll be like, this guy's a bum. He's not doing anything. If you're engaged, you're like, oh, this guy's actually amazing. He's like holding this team together. That to me, if, if, if you watch hockey that way, if you watch the lightning and Islanders that way, you'll learn a ton about the sport, how systems work, um, attention to detail. And when you do see the same thing over and over again, the lightning attack, the Islanders stop it. The lightning attack, the Islanders stop it. When the lightning finally break through, mm-hmm. that repetition allows you to realize, oh, they did this this time. Mm-hmm. And it beat them. And then you watch the Islanders adjust and you go, oh, it's, it will be, I think, a bit of a chess match. That doesn't mean it's going to be boring. I, I uh, also want to say this. Every time I watch Mark Stone and J.G. Pajo, I I'm... First off, I think they're the Eastern and Western Conference version of each other. And then I'm reminded that they were on the same team. And did Ottawa overreact to Eric Carlson wanting out? They oversold. They really- Stone didn't want to sign there. Well, yeah, I guess he didn't, eh? Was there sort of- <sighs> I think, man, I, I just feel like maybe it was a Eugene thing or whatever. Boy, did they fuck that up. 
Like it's not, it's not that they aren't building really well. Cause I think Pierre Dorian's done a really good job. And uh, you know, there's a lot to love about the Ottawa senators currently, but you know, I look at some of the players that they had and I think, man, if you'd gotten rid of the problem areas, Carlson didn't want to be there. Hoffman needed to go. You can't, you can't repair that. The problem area is the only, yeah, it was cause yeah. At the, the 18 19 season, when they traded Stone to Vegas for Brandstrom and that little package, it was because Stone was becoming a UFA and Ottawa's like, hey, we don't have money. Our owner's not going to pay up for Mark Stone. They just ship him over to it's, Vegas. It's so much easier to pitch a rebuild there because during a rebuild, you don't have to pay anybody. Like, this is the thing about the Sens. I think we all agree they're young and talented. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be better next year and they're going to continue to get better. But at some point down the line, you're going to have to pay these dudes. And then what? Well, Brady's going to be first. We'll see if he signs that extension this off season. And, but then they got to keep going. It's not just going to be Brady. It's going to be this guy. And then this guy, and then this guy, it's, it's, it's almost like they got to hit this sweet spot in order to contend. And in 2017, they found it. But once like their window slammed shut with the money, Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. It's a tough way to be. It's Pierre Dorian. Once every I, ten years, you get a swing. I, like ugh. I, Pierre Dorian might be a much more talented G- GM than we give him credit for, just because of the the tight uh, parameters, parameters that he's. I mean, I think we under. have to give him a ton of credit. That that team played great. Um, DJ Smith deserves a ton of credit as well. Um, it's a you know he's assembled this band of merry men, um, but as we know. As things, you know, like the thing is, it's, e- it's easy when you're not, when there's nothing at stake, when there are no expectations. There is something to that. And, and trust me, I, 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 watching the 16, 17 Leafs barely squeak in and you're playing with house money, man, that's great. That's fun. What happens when it's been five years and you haven't got out of the first round? Things because get a little bit dream. annoying and you've got an owner who's squirreling. I mean, really, that's, to me, part of it with, with, with what happened in Ottawa, at least it just feels this way, is the owner just like, I'm tired of cheering for this particular group. Because he could have paid them. If he can pay the guys now, why couldn't he have paid them then? I don't know. Anyway, we're getting off track. I'm all the way in on the Islanders. I understand that that is a, a tough take. But I think I'm, I'm it's not that it's not that tough. It's back to back conference finals. They're a very good team. I'm just curious this to see what Barry awesome. Trotz can do with the Tampa Bay Lightning this year. That's all. Mm-hmm. I think what can think, he do against them? I think Don Lecision said this is only the second time in the cap era. There's been a repeat of the conference final. Oh, we have three, three teams come back and Corey Perry's team. I saw that tweet today. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> funny. Very good. That's I oh, wow. I forgot Vegas was final four last year yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Pretty cool. Wow. Um, with regards to Vegas, Montreal, I mean, the odds makers aren't giving Montreal much credit. Uh, I said it on the last show. I think it's a, a 4 0 sweep. Um, maybe Montreal gets a game, but if they have a chance here, it has to start with Carey Price, right? Uh, 100%. It's got to start with Carey Price. Um, Vegas, here's the thing uh, I think Montreal had a very clear game plan against the Leafs in the first round, and that's we're going to try to bully them. And the Leafs did their best to resist that, um, and it ended up wearing on them. Vegas is the team that does that to you. And their bigger but kind of older decor in Montreal, that's you're gonna have a that's not gonna be fun. It's really not gonna be fun. And Philip Deneau has been so good, but in each series, for reasons beyond his control, his job was made easier. That's that's not an insult against him, you know. Let's forget the injury to Tavares, forget the suspension to Shifley. Let's say they got abducted by aliens instead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Philip, would your job be easier if John Tavares was abducted by an alien in game one of the series? Yep. Mm-hmm. Would your job be easier if Mark Shifley got abducted by an alien <laughs> in game one of the series? Yep. So who on Vegas takes themselves or what happens in the universe that takes a star Vegas center out of the game and then Montreal walks into the Stanley Cup Finals? William Carlson or Chandler (laughs) Stevenson. And they just come at you in waves. They're heavy. Um, They got really good goaltending. And it's probably probably the best defense the Montreal's faced. And the Leafs wasn't even bad. Mm -hmm. Um, I just... You don't, it, it's like the Islanders Tampa conversation for me. You don't have to take anything away from Montreal to look at Vegas and go, they should win. 
Right. We should be gearing up for a Vegas Tampa final. Well, and I'm, see, I'm, the thing is, people are taking this as like I've I've been hard on Dom Ducharme because I think he's I I just oh, don't, I just don't think he's a great coach. <laughs> you did it. I did it. I actually said it right. Ducharme, what? Um, but I think it's I think it's great that they're going to hang on to him for three or, for three or four years. It's fantastic as a Leaf fan. Uh, not a strategic genius from what I've seen, but wow! But oh, goodness, you got to give Montreal full marks for getting here. You can't take that away. Good for you. That's awesome. However, um, when we're looking at this particular matchup, it's not a stretch to say that the second place team in the NHL will probably steamroll the 18th place team. Isn't that amazing? And there's people that are saying to me, like on Twitter, well, Montreal's record doesn't really show it all because uh, they had a harder start out of COVID and they had this. Like, there were people I have Habs fans in my mentions for 48 hours explaining to me how they're not an 18th place team. Well, you know what? The where, okay, where were you heading into round one, guys? Yeah, well. Where were you heading into round one? I didn't hear any of this shit talk heading into that Leaf series. Now you're standing taller. I get it. You're, they have you're results. In, you're into round three and you're standing taller and you're feeling yourself. But where were you heading into the first round? I didn't see any of you. Any of you. You were gearing up for it. I didn't see you after game four. I know that. After game five, you started to show up. After mm-hmm. game six, you really started to show up. And after game seven, there you are. It's your party. I get it. But where were you? You're big Habs fan. Support your team. Go on. Where were you? <laughs> I mean, they were they were supporting, I think. But it was sort of like, well, we don't really have a shot. No, here. they were hoping. Can hoping. I just There's remind the people that if the Habs win even one game, Adam has to make a $200 donation to Black Earth Hockey. Which I'm happy about. I'm thrilled to. <laughs> but they're not. And I have to give regardless, I think. I, I no. listen back and I still don't understand. <laughs> but you have to cool. hold a cookie Stanley Cup above your head. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'll do it. I think I'm not a jerk. I think it's not like the thing is I'm trying to be as kind as possible. To be like people are like, you're just salty about Toronto. You just can't handle Montreal. I'm like, I'm the one who was cool with the with the CN Tower being lit up red, blue, and white. Like, I am salty about the Leafs, but that has nothing to do with Montreal. It has everything to do with the Leafs fucking blowing it again. Does it mean that Montreal, like, okay, Montreal beat Winnipeg. Who didn't pick that? We kind of thought that that was going to happen, didn't we? And a lot of tweets recently, you can just blow a fart at. Well, so the thing I'm saying is just because I'm a Toronto Maple Leafs fan doesn't mean I, I, I can't look at the Habs objectively and go, they're your 18th and they're second. And they just beat first. Nobody, including Montreal reporters, had Montreal winning. Yes, none of the, not even them. the first round. Yes, like no one in Canada, no That's one right. in the states, no one in Toronto, no one in Montreal. No one had them, and neither did you. Stop it. Neither did you. <laughs> you hoped, like we all hope. But you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and pick Montreal to beat Vegas. There it is. There uh, it is. I'm gonna, you know I'm gonna go on the limb that nobody wants to go out on. Alan Walsh is preparing the DeBoer sword, and he's ready to spear you with it, sir. Because if Flurry turns thing, into a pumpkin, it's a series. One thing well, that Robin happened Leonard's last there. night was Flurry wasn't the best. He made one when it was four three. He came across and he made one beautiful save, and it was vintage Flurry. But other than that, the three goals he let in weren't the best goals. So there's a chance Flurry. I don't know. It is not, he's not a cost in the series, but he can be a factor if Montreal can get through. Of course. I, I Listen, Carey Price has been really, really good in these playoffs. Yes. But he's he's beatable. Like, he looked human against the Leafs. He, he got, I mean, game seven was his masterpiece for sure. Um, but that, I don't even think that was his best game of the series, and he still looked beatable. And he gave up multiple multi-goal leads. The Jets series... Uh, I mean, Jets fans, I don't think we'll take any insult. That, that series was trash. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't good hockey. It Those guys stunk. Series. They did not look like a second, uh, a second round hockey team. I think, I think they were missing their admit, number one guy. Guys, I think we're, it's fair to admit that, uh, I mean, do we not now just admit that we were wrong about the North Division and that it wasn't very good? This it's a time? hunk of shit. It's oh, a yeah. Hunk of yeah shit. It's not the best. Garbage. Yeah. yeah. We were, it, they were right. We don't have to take anything away from the Habs. Again, they're they're here. But, mm-hmm. like, dude, this division stunk. Yeah. The Leafs did, in fact, beat up on very bad teams, and they weren't a very good team themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like, the Oilers and Leafs both have to be looking at themselves, the one and two teams in that division. 
and they got to go, oh God, not only did we lose in the first round, but this division stunk. I got to text- every team that missed the playoffs and the flames who like sort of narrowly missed it. They got to be like, wow, we might, we might actually be dog shit. Yeah. I think the flames <laughs> need to blow it up. I mean, seeing what you've seen, but the, um, the thing with, uh, Julian McKenzie texted me the other day and he's like, you know, brighter things ahead for Toronto, whatever. Cause he was giving me the gears about how, you know, my, Shut up, Julian. Shut and I up. said, and I had to tell you, man, like Julian's a really nice dude and he's the best. I don't believe that there are brighter days ahead. I think the Leafs are in deep shit and we can talk about that all summer, but yeah. I actually don't think, what? I don't, I think that they're worse than we thought. When Adam starts to sniff, that's when you know he's about to tell you some shit that you're not going to like, but you just got to take it. He's, he I think the little sniffy thing. Shit. I don't, I don't think they have it. I don't think they have it. Uh, and I don't think they have it with this core. And I'm just going to go out and say it. They just do not. They're going to uh, look way different. But we'll, don't worry. We're going to do three more years of this. And then everybody will leave via free agency to Arizona, right? Because that's where they're all signing. So I cannot wait. Um, I did, uh, I did a little digging yesterday Mm -hmm. so the leafs ahead of the expansion draft do actually have to sign someone yeah at at least one person um because if they do the four and four which everyone seems to think they're going to do the big four at forward and then they're going to protect muzzin they're going to protect riley brody and hall i got a disturbing amount of tweets saying the Leafs should expose muzzin and i can't tell if it was a bit it must be It, it has to be a bit um some saying hall Probably Canucks fans being like, huh. Yeah. They've been pretty funny this year. So they <laughs> certainly have given credit. So let's say it's four and four. If the Leafs do that, um, the Leafs do not meet exposure requirements. So they need to sign one of Bogosian, I think Hutton, and Dermott, one of those three, in order to have enough defensemen to expose to Seattle hmm. in the expansion draft. So I would expect. I mean, they could trade for someone. I doubt it. I don't really, I don't see why you would trade for an asset that you're just going to expose unless you're just surrendering cap space. I don't know. You trade Engvall for a defenseman and could you trade Kirkland them and they get taken? That was floated on Twitter. It was funny. <sighs> you know what sucks? Kerfoot, like, add to the list of amazing Leaf performances in that series. <laughs> that were just pissed away. Yep. No he one's given so him any good. credit. Poor guy. Uh, he was, we wanted to trade him all year. Lee fans were like, it's gotta be Kerfoot. He's going to go. He's going to go. He's going to go. Great player in the playoffs. And they kept him and he rewarded the team for keeping him and nothing, <laughs> nothing done in first round again. Ah, uh, it's just not fair. Anyway, sorry. That's all I wanted to say is the Leafs need to, sign or acquire a defenseman ahead of the expansion draft, or they're going to have to expose one of Muzzin, Riley, Brody, or Hall. Hmm. It's kind of a big story. They'll figure it out. They will. They will. Kerfoot's gone. I'm sorry. but Let's do a quick press conference. Growing up, cereal was one of the best parts about being a kid, but um, I had to give it up because I realized it was full of sugar and junk and the things that you really shouldn't eat. So like everybody else trying to cart down on carbs and sugar and unhealthy food, I realized I can't just eat everything that I want anymore. So, you know, you have, you know, protein shakes and vegetable shakes and powders and just, ugh. that's why I think you should try the thing that I tried, which is magic spoon, zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein. So you can get strong and only net four grams of carbs for each serving. And that's only 140 calories per serving. It's keto-friendly. It's gluten-free. It's grain-free. It's soy-free. It's low-carb and GMO-free. The variety pack includes four flavors of cocoa, fruity, frosted, and peanut butter. It's absolutely delicious. And if you go to magicspoon.com slash STP to grab your variety pack and try it today, well, you get $5 off your first order. Again, use our promo code STP at checkout and get yourself $5 off your first order at magicspoon.com. Again, that's magicspoon.com slash SDP. News and notes, two of them. Uh Uh, The Blue Jackets hired a new head coach. Oh, they did? I missed that. Brad Larson, uh, their longtime assistant. He is now uh, their eighth head coach in franchise history. Hey, hey, you want to have some fun? Go look at the tweet announcing him as the new head coach. Mm -hmm. Blue Jackets fans hate it. (laughs) Oh, now why? What? Uh, I uh, I honestly I don't know enough about this person. Mm-hmm. Um, all I know is he's been the assistant coach there for a while. The where's the actual? Yeah, here it is. The official. 
Yeah, some, oh no, I'm not so, reading that. <laughs> no, there's haters. a lot you can't read. But it's the, no. the, the the Columbus Blue Jackets named Brad Larson the eighth head coach in franchise history. The first response. Can't wait to see who the ninth head coach in franchise history is. Oh my god. Yeah, it's there's uh, some bad stuff in there. I I don't know enough about this person. Though the one thing I would say to Blue Jackets fans, and again, talking out my ass because I don't know anything about this guy, but um I sort of called this with DJ Smith. And I think I was pretty right about it. Being a head coach is different from being an assistant coach. And DJ Smith has struck me as a guy who's a great head coach. And he was an assistant with the Leafs. There's some debate as to his success. Then he becomes a head coach with the Sens. We, he was a Memorial Cup winning head coach in junior. Who knows? Maybe this guy's a better head coach than he is an assistant coach. But uh, I don't know. Blue Jackets fans seem to know more than I do, and they're pretty pissed. <laughs> Are you reading the replies? <laughs> oh my God. I, yeah, I like, can't. I, <laughs> there's not a single, like, hey, good luck, Brad, anything. Not one. Like, you, usually you get one. Like, somebody who doesn't know enough or somebody that's not too invested or, hey, we don't know yet. That is, that they is all interesting. Hate it. They hate it. Wow. Uh, other news and note that I had was the Hart Trophy finalists were announced, and Austin Matthews is on. Oh, yeah. So shout out, oh. shout out Matthews, I McKinnon, don't, and McDavid. I don't think he's going to win it. No. Got to go to McDavid. Hey, maybe sorry. McKinnon, but, but it's nice that he's nominated. It's, McD- it's McDavid. Has to be, uh, yeah, right? Yeah. Has to be. The think about where we were before the Edmonton sealed, sweep, though. right? Yeah. yeah, you're right. 100 point season. G- going back to uh, just sitting in your mistakes conversation. So my final four video is up. And one of the first responses from an Islanders fan is just, ah, yes, my favorite Islander, Nathan Beauvillier. It's is Anthony Beauvillier. <laughs> it's Anthony. Did I call him Nathan earlier this show? I didn't, I don't know. I didn't notice. What a fucking idiot. I hate myself. Okay. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> You know who I hate is Jeff Ducharme. <laughs> hey, remember that dater conversation about how we all make mistakes? Uh, it happens. It happens. This is, uh, I miss being in the same room as Drew so bad because I would, I would do these things all the time just because you're saying things too fast. Huh. And he would be like, dude, Anthony. And I, oh, right. Right. And now I just sit in my wrongness and be wrong. I hate it. Uh, this was a question from uh, do underscore Ramey. Mm-hmm. Um, he asked who uh, my hottest first degree relative is. What happened on the show when we, we got asked our hottest first degree relatives? Do you remember that that conversation? Did, dude, yes. Yeah. Dude, why you were, did, that was like your second or third show with us. Yeah. Oh, why did we funny. do that? I don't know. That's <laughs> funny, though. I that, that, like I remember at the time laughing. I don't think we answered the question. But uh, it's just. I, I thought you guys might have remembered the context. No, right. man, I can't remember what we did last. No, it was. No. <laughs> we we got. Um, it was just like a, we wanted to do like a get to know Jesse bunch of questions from listeners. Right. And someone. It wasn't Adam and I going, "Hey Jesse, you got a hot cousin?" <laughs> it was. It was someone asks, "Who is your hottest first degree relative?" And I was like, "What the? F- what is this?" Yeah. Yeah. Was back when we were just trying stuff. Anyway. Everybody's got to come up somehow, right? Uh, this was from Josh Vesh. Future of Manny Malhotra with the Leafs. I think it's, that's under review. Yeah, it's okay. At some point, the carousel to has it. to stop. <laughs> yeah. The carousel has to stop. Yeah. Um, at what point do the players, and it's been a lot of the same players, have to take ownership of the power play being ass. Um, like why? Oh, it's M- fire Manny. And then I forget the last guy, but he's with the front next now and fire him. And I forget who it was before him. Paul McFarlane. Him. It was Paul McFarlane. Paul and then McFarlane. before that DJ Smith, I think, didn't he run it? And he, he ran the penalty kill. Oh, who was the other guy? I'm trying to remember Under Babs. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, I, I know, I know well, everybody want to get rid of Haxtell last year and the defense was good this year. Yeah. It, like, and, like at some point the carousel has to stop. It's got to stop. They, they, how many assistants can you fire? They're on their second head coach now. This group, uh, management's changed. Personnel around them has changed. The big guys got to score. Mm-hmm. How like how do you win the rocket 
and have a guy top five in NHL scoring and have a shitty power play. That doesn't make any sense. Imagine they had a good one. Yeah, like, like how many goals do you have then? They'll be in the playoffs. Well, and so so that 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 brings me to quote Mark Bergevin from a team that wasn't very good. And he said, the answer's in the room. And I think with 40, $45 million on the power play, if you count Morgan Riley, um, the answer has to be in the room. If they don't have the answer, which right now, based on the results, they don't, then this core doesn't have it. Dude, uh, the last power play goal scored in that series for the Leafs was by Joe Thornton. And everyone's like, get him off the first unit. He's the reason it sucks. Stop taking pressure off the stars. Yeah. They Time to make, blame the stars a little. Yeah. They make, take all the shit money. Give them shit. I don't know. Well, I'm supposed to feel bad. Score. To, to quote Mad Men, that's what the money is for. Score. Score, I don't care. Well, and, and the thing that bugs me is that, like, you criticize some of these guys. We spend all year complimenting them. Mm-hmm. Then they, they no-show us in the playoffs. Now it's hard to play here. And, yeah, now it's our fault. <laughs> it's Did our you, fault and the rest of the Toronto media circus or whatever. You see, the, like, column, huh? you see the column about Nathan McKinnon heading into game six and how he's a choke artist? What? Uh, yeah. I guess but, when you're- but here we're mean. It's mean here. Get out of here. Like, you make all the money. Score. The, if you don't score, they're fucked. That's what taking up that much of the cap does. Yeah. Two guys take up a quarter of the cap. You have to score. There's no other option. Yeah. And the thing Sorry. is, I, I do feel bad for Dubas a little bit because, um, you know, I mean, he, he, he accepted this. So I don't feel bad from him on that front, but people are like, well, you know, I even said it like, oh, secondary scoring, whatever. And you more though, you look at the numbers, you go, no, secondary scoring was there. People are like, oh, I need more depth, whatever. No, who didn't score in the series? Who didn't score on the play in, in the penalty? Sorry, the power play all year long. Who was not scoring? It was the best him. players on the team. I feel bad for him this year because I don't know what I would have changed. No, this year, I know exactly what it would change. And if the same thing happens next year, I got no sympathy, none. That's fair. This uh, all started with Manny Malhotra somehow. <laughs> final two things. The tweet I referenced earlier was from Batch Hockey, uh, Brendan Batchelor, uh, the play-by-play guy from the Canucks, when he said for the second straight year, the last four teams in the Stanley Cup playoffs are the Lightning, Islanders, Golden Knights, and Corey Perry's team. Very funny. That's wild. And, uh, last thing, uh, McKinnon. Three series wins in first eight seasons. McDavid, one series win in first six seasons. Matthews, zero season wins in first five seasons. Crosby, seven series wins, two Stanley Cup final appearances, one cup win in first four seasons. Rob That's Rossi tweet? Rob Rossi. Unbelievable. Oh. Sidney Crosby appreciation tour cannot okay. stop chugging along. We need okay. a, a That's cool. I, I agree with him on that. Doesn't mean that he had to be the heart nominee this year because of what he did in the past. He wasn't. Oh, is that why? That's what it was about. He's oh, pissed well, off. Shut up. Yeah, he's pissed about the uh the fact that Crosby wasn't nominated for the heart. Rob was? I'm pretty sure. Is that, that the what co- the, oh, I'm I didn't know sure this is him doubling down? I didn't know that was the context of the tweet. Yeah, it's it's well McKinnon McDavid. Matthews is are they not the three players mentioned in the tweet? So wait, I'm oh, sorry. Sidney wow. Crosby was good 2005 to 2010 <laughs> means he should be nominated for the 2021 That's heart. What I'm saying. Shut up. <gasps> I thought he was just making a good point about the young players in the game today and comparing them to Sidney Crosby's early career. Well, he's it's right. a good point if that's the context. Yeah, the context, I thought he was like highlighting a, a legend in the game today. Yeah, because <laughs> I hear that and I go, oh well. I mean, that, that just yeah. shows you how unreal Sid the Kid was. Yeah. Like, why he was the phenom that he was. Look at these other very good players and how much they've struggled shows how good Crosby was. Mm-hmm. But you're, you, if you use it in the 2021 art context, that's stupid. Here was, here was his other tweet, I guess, that was before that, that I didn't realize was <laughs> in relation. If the NHL's worst division produces two heart finalists, but nobody was in arenas to see them play, did their value really happen? Oh, he, so he would have had an argument if the NHL's worst division created two heart nominees, period. 
like or comma is it actually uh uh is it actually you know a valid award i i think you can make that argument but uh, the argument that nobody was there to see them we have a that has nothing to do with it. <laughs> you know what sports media is sorely I don't know. Sport, sports media right now is sorely lacking. And and you saw this with the what happened in Colorado and people are like, oh, there's so many hungry young journalists who want into this industry. We need a farm system. Yeah, that'll never happen. We, <laughs> but it'll never it happen. It did happen. No, nah, it didn't. It did never. happen, but there were cuts everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere across this country across the united states everywhere we need a farm system we need new blood this is brutal or it's just a bad take i mean yeah. this was the same in an ocean that, of them yeah, like this is a guy that like basically challenged barry trotz to a fight a few years ago too we played that audio um <laughs> rob do you remember, yeah do you remember that no he was, it was like rob rossi versus the the capitals and then it was like we'll see what happens next game barry and he just like st- leered at the camera. I'm like, all right, that's. Do you- I remember putting it on the show. So I, just, I don't know. It's it's you know. Listen, I I get it. Yeah, he covers the team. Sidney Crosby's one of the best players of all time. Of course, Sidney Crosby. Of course, you're gonna be like, man, I see this guy every night. He's fucking amazing. And he's not getting the 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 mm-hmm. thing that he deserves. Fair, fair, fair. But to say that McDavid and Matthews didn't deserve it because there was nobody there to see it. It's just not a take. It's just it's just a factual, like, yeah, I guess. And then sounds like you didn't watch him, Rob. You could have said all Rob had to do was say, yo, they beat up on shit teams in a shit division, and they should not get the heart for it. You might have what, an argument there. What about Mac? McKinnon, well, McKinnon for sure deserved it. But you could have made that argument about McDavid and Matthews. Because he sure. was talking about the two, two of the three. Totally. Uh, I don't know. Hard, hard to score in the NHL, man. His assertion that there's over 40 times is that there's some um, anti Penguins bias in NHL award voting. You have got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding Has me. Has any team won more individual hardware than the Penguins over the last 30 years? No. He it's says upon Detroit? the last, last, uh, Penguins actually haven't won that many NHL awards voted upon over the last 35 years. When I suggested an anti uh, Pittsburgh bias might exist for awards, I was told that never happened. Well, I can bet, I, I can tell you this Pittsburgh got plenty of the thing that everybody wants, which is the Stanley Cup. Yes. So, you, you can, I mean, really, I've said it before. The NHL awards don't really matter. Who cares? It's great for the players. Fans, fine if you care. I've never cared too much. Um, I think the, the trophy that matters is the cup. And how many do the Penguins have in the last 30 years? Four? Five? Uh, five. Yeah. 30 years? Yeah, five. Yeah. So you've won. Uh, their first you, cup, I think, was exactly 30 years ago. Yeah. So you've won how many? Like, what's the percentage? Five or six? percent <laughs> sorry not five percent like no it's more than t- it's, sorry you've won in the last 30 years you've won like 30 percent of the cups or like whatever. as much yeah. as anybody basically yeah it's insane yeah. what the fuck like, uh, it's like you you guys in detroit what else do you want but this is the only time we ever talk about him i know this is I the know. only time we ever talk about this guy <laughs> okay we well. talk about crosby plenty he's a, and he's a good writer like this is the thing that takes it away oh, yeah. right like it's yeah. just this is a good writer I don't know. Uh, anyway, listen. I'd love to know what's said about me. I mean, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, you don't know? <laughs> I saw his streams. <laughs> he did well. And then he gets on his YouTube channel and screams. He's a weirdo. Anyway, I, listen. We, where's uh, an Animaniac shirt? Let's, let's, let's leave it at this. Uh, we have got. I like my Animaniac shirt. <laughs> we've got uh, 48 hours without hockey. When we come back on Monday, we will have one hockey game total to talk about one game and then we'll get into the third round and it's going to be very exciting super pumps we will see you there love you and i hope you have a fantastic week the steve dangle podcast follow the guys on twitter at steve underscore dangle at adam w y l d e and at jesse blake 